My first impressions of the South Pole were, it's cold, it's bright, and oh my God, where am I? Hello and welcome back to Tiny Ice, where I share bits for my trip to Antarctica in two minutes or less. I went to the South Pole as a polar trek educator. You can find more information about them below. Today we're going to talk about what it's like to live at the South Pole. I lived and worked there for about three weeks and it really felt like I was on an alien planet. It's going to be really hard to talk about it in just two minutes, so I'm going to cheat. Well, kind of. I'll still cover a few of the big and interesting things in my allotted time, and then I'll probably just end up sharing most of it on my Instagram like I do every week. I share photos, videos, and more information about every topic that I cover in a Tiny Ice video, so make sure you check it out. The infrastructure at the bottom of the world is amazing, so let's talk about a few of the things that make life at the South Pole possible. Ready? Let's go. Let's talk about the indoors. The Edmonton Scott South Pole Station can house up to 154 people at one time. It's like a miniature city all in one building. There's dorms, a basketball court, a library, even a greenhouse. To combat the buildup of snow and ice every year, this entire station was built on hydraulic columns that can lift it about 10 inches every time. For those of you wondering, yes, there is internet, but it depends on satellite coverage. For me, that meant about two to three hours of a usable connection, which was really only fast enough for emails, updating my blogs, and some casual browsing. And now let's talk about water, which doesn't sound like a big deal since there's ice everywhere, but that ice has to be melted and that takes energy. Water conservation is extremely important at the South Pole. In fact, every person is only allowed two two-minute showers per week. Luckily, it's so cold you barely sweat. <laughs> the only time you're allowed to use water freely is if you're drinking it or if you're washing your hands. Running water is possible thanks to the rod well, which is a cavity that begins around 250 feet below the ice. Steam is used to melt the ice in this cavity and create a pool of water that is then pumped back up to the station for everyday use. Each rod well has a lifespan of about seven years and is estimated to provide about a million gallons of fresh, pure, and seriously ancient water. Now let's switch to the outdoors. The space around the station is divided into different sectors and you can get around by either walking or via snowmobile. Each sector is home to a particular set of experiments which dictate the rule for that sector. For example, the Atmospheric Research Observatory is part of the clean air sector, which has the cleanest air in the world. The rule? Air pollutants like snowmobiles are not allowed. I spent most of my time in the dark sector with the Ice Cube Laboratory. The rule here was that we had to eliminate any stray light or radio waves. So you could still ride in on your snowmobile, you just had to turn your radio off. Every day I think about the South Pole and every day I want to go back, especially now. While I was there, I also filmed a typical morning routine, which I'll link down below for you to check out. Thanks for stopping by for some tiny eyes. Stay tuned for more bits for my trip to Antarctica. See you later.